Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Barney the Dinosaur? Barney is the topic of a documentary titled, I Love You, You Hate Me. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll offer my analysis. The story of Barney the Dinosaur starts with a woman named Cheryl Leach. She was born in Athens, Texas on December 31, 1952. She earned a bachelor's degree in elementary education and a master's degree in bilingual education. Cheryl was a school teacher for a while and then took a job as a writer with a company called Developmental Learning Materials. There she met a man named James Leach. He was the son of Richard Leach, who was the owner of the company. Cheryl and James married and had a son named Patrick. Cheryl decided to stay home and take care of Patrick, who was described as having a lot of energy. She tried to find ways to keep Patrick engaged. For a while, she relied on a video called We Sing Together. Patrick really liked the video and it kept him occupied, but eventually it became ineffective. Cheryl desperately searched for a replacement, but was unable to find one which was suitable. She decided that she would design her own video series targeting preschoolers. Originally, the protagonist of the show was a teddy bear, but Cheryl decided to go with a dinosaur after Patrick expressed an interest in a dinosaur exhibit. This is when Barney the Dinosaur was created. He was a human-sized purple Tyrannosaurus rex who had a permanent creepy smile. The idea of the show is that Barney was a stuffed animal who was brought to life and would interact with various children by telling them that he loved them. Cheryl presented her idea to developmental learning materials, but the board was not interested. Her father-in-law, Richard, agreed to fund the project with $700,000 of his own money. Cheryl was made president of a production company called The Lions Group. In 1988, they produced a video series called Barney and the Backyard Gang. The video series had a reasonable degree of success, but the concept did not really take off until 1992 when it became a TV show titled Barney and Friends on PBS. After this, Barney was watched by 2 million people a day and became an international phenomenon. Barney and Friends became the most watched show on public television. In 1998, Cheryl Leach left the show. Later, the Barney and Friends TV show was sold to a media company for $275 million. Barney's reign of terror would come to an end in 2010 when the show was mercifully canceled. In addition to leaving the show in 1998, Cheryl separated from her husband James Leach this year. They divorced in 2001. A few years later, James brought an end to his own life. Cheryl Leach spent a lot of time in the Caribbean and opened a restaurant there. Her son Patrick worked with her for a while, but then he moved back to the United States into a mansion owned by his mother in Malibu. When Patrick was 27 years old, he ran into a bit of trouble with law enforcement. He had a 49-year-old neighbor named Eric Shanks. Patrick and Eric had a number of disputes. Allegedly, Eric would yell at Patrick from time to time, and Patrick felt threatened. On January 9, 2013, Eric was walking toward his residence when he stopped and looked at a surveillance camera near the gate for Patrick's property. Eric then continued on his way to his property. After seeing Eric on video, Patrick drove to Eric's property and confronted him. This was at about 9.30 a.m. Patrick never left his vehicle. After a brief argument, Eric turned around to walk back to his residence. At this time, Patrick produced a firearm. Eric said to Patrick, a gun, really? Are you going to shoot me? In that instant, Eric found out the answer to his question. Patrick fired several times and struck Eric one time in the chest. The bullet exited his shoulder. Eric survived and would eventually recover. Patrick drove away and was pulled over by the police on the Pacific Coast Highway. They found a rifle and a handgun. They also noticed that Patrick was wearing a bulletproof vest. He was charged with attempted murder 
an assault with a semi-automatic firearm. Patrick Leach would eventually plead no contest to assault with a deadly weapon. On July 1, 2015, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but the governor commuted his sentence after five years. Eric Shanks filed a lawsuit against both Patrick and Cheryl, saying that Cheryl should have known better than to allow Patrick to have a firearm in her mansion. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. The formula for Barney and Friends was fairly straightforward. At the beginning of each episode, Barney is a stuffed animal. The cast members of the show, who are children, bring him to life through their imaginations. Other annoying dinosaur characters were featured in the show as well. Barney would interact with the children at a school and in later seasons, a park. The children would learn about the topic of the episode. At the end of the episode, Barney would return to his original stuffed animal form and wink to the camera. The children would then have a little meeting and talk about what they learned. Which brings me to item number two. The character Barney was based on the idea that preschoolers strongly prefer repetition. Barney would dance around on the show while delivering the same messages repeatedly. He had one particular song which started with the words, I love you, you love me. Before the show was purchased by the large media company, there was no conflict whatsoever in the storylines. The show was extremely simplistic. There were never any surprises or drama. The show was always positive and had no hint of realism. Barney was capable of keeping the attention of preschoolers, which gave parents an opportunity to accomplish other goals or simply allowed them to take a break. So it's understandable why parents found Barney to be valuable, at least for a time. Some would argue that Barney functioned like a babysitter and would mesmerize children, or he was like a drug to which the children became addicted. Which leads me to item number three. An anti-Barney movement started not long after Barney became popular. Many people hated Barney and what he stood for, which was unregulated and out-of-control positivity, as well as mindless repetition. Many people felt as though Barney was too simplistic and was trying to replace beloved Sesame Street characters with an inferior purple dinosaur. People had various negative opinions about Barney. Just a few examples. He was a predator. He was running a children's cult. The show involved a seance which would conjure up Barney. Barney was evil. Barney was satanic. And he was like purple crack for kids. Anti-Barney sentiment expressed in a variety of ways, including people playing the role of Barney being attacked in retail stores, an anti-Barney website, and a newsletter called the I Hate Barney newsletter. People would get together and destroy likenesses of Barney, like attacking Barney stuffed animals with an axe, shooting them, and setting them on fire. A few of the people connected with the Barney and Friends TV show received death threats. A scene from the movie Nine Months featured a character played by Tom Arnold beating up a green and orange dinosaur named Arnie, who was clearly based on Barney. A sports mascot called the San Diego Chicken had a recurring routine at baseball games where another character would dress up in a costume that looked like Barney and would engage in a dance competition with the chicken. The competition ended with the chicken beating up the dinosaur. In 1998, the Lions Group, which owned the Barney TV show, sued the San Diego Chicken. Even though the routine was clearly legitimate parody, they argued that children were becoming confused and thinking that the real Barney was being beat up by a chicken. In the lawsuit, the Lions Group described how a two-year-old girl cried for two days after seeing the chicken rough up Barney, before finally describing what she saw as, quote, chicken step on Barney, unquote. Ultimately, Barney was defeated and had to pay the attorney's fees of the San Diego chicken. According to the documentary, the owner of Barney also sent cease and desist letters to an anti-Barney website, but they never actually filed a lawsuit against them. Moving to item number four, the amount of negative attention attracted by Barney may have had an effect on Cheryl's son, Patrick. Some people theorize that being associated with Barney caused Patrick a lot of stress and may have led to the shooting incident. He was described as paranoid. Perhaps this paranoia was caused by always being worried 
that other people were going to insult him because his mother developed the Barney character. Other factors could have contributed to Patrick's behavior as well. For example, the documentary mentioned that he had a benign tumor removed from his brain and had been dependent on marijuana at one point. Based on the limited amount of information available about this case, the Barney made me do it explanation is insufficient. A sibling rivalry with a six-foot purple dinosaur should not cause anybody to shoot another human being. I think Barney can be blamed for a lot of terrible things, but not the shooting. Item number five, did Barney really deserve to be hated by so many people? Was he a force of good or a monster who terrorized society for years? The documentary tried to tie the Barney bashing to a larger cultural issue. What does it say about people that they would invest so much energy to destroy Barney-related objects? Was this toxic masculinity? Was this about people who didn't understand that Barney was geared toward preschoolers and not meant to be watched by adults? People who defended Barney said that he was a cherished childhood character who only offered love and peace and who promoted diversity. There was nothing evil about Barney. Here are my thoughts on this. I can appreciate that Barney was designed to retain the attention of children and give parents a bit of a break. Raising a preschooler can be quite difficult. They have a lot of energy and can get into trouble quickly. Barney the dinosaur certainly fulfilled his intended purpose, but is simply holding one's attention a high enough standard for television shows like this? I would argue that there are many items which can hold a person's attention that are not necessarily healthy. Heroin, for example, has an amazing ability to keep people engaged. I think the bar has to be set higher than simply keeping preschoolers staring at a screen. Barney never dealt with any negativity on the TV show. He never had to face reality like children do. One could argue that Barney was simply delivering unconditional love. That is, he was perfectly without judgment for the children on the show. I think it's more accurate to say that Barney was delivering indiscriminate love. Barney loved everyone and didn't seem to be too keen on background checks. It's important to have standards, but Barney never taught that lesson. His message was simplistic. Everyone should love everyone else. The real world doesn't work that way. The lesson that Barney taught children was that life doesn't require thinking and there's never a reason to worry. There was never a problem to solve on the show. Therefore, it did not help viewers develop problem-solving skills. I think one reason so many people protested against Barney was because they believed that children deserved a better role model. Another problem with Barney was the repetitious music. There was the sense that Barney was like a drug that was highly addictive for children, but had the opposite effect on adults. With all this in mind, I think that it makes sense that people became aggravated with Barney. Rejecting Barney was rejecting the inane, mindless nonsense of a permanently and unrealistically positive, saccharine, purple dinosaur. Barney could be compared to Godzilla, the legendary dinosaur of movie fame, who frequently fought various other creatures. Godzilla had something called the atomic breath. He could shoot radioactive plasma out of his mouth. Barney had something much more dangerous coming out of his mouth, atomic boredom. He could use it to blast parents away as he simultaneously hypnotized their children. Barney could haunt the nightmares of parents more effectively than Godzilla ever could. Godzilla would occasionally save the world from various monsters, but he was no match for the horrific capabilities of Barney, the repetitive dinosaur. Those are my thoughts on the case of Barney the dinosaur. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as a one-dimensional park-dwelling purple dinosaur. Thanks for watching.